Hi, we are continuing our discussion uh, of the MIPS pipeline and last time we have uh, uh, built the uh, pipeline and uh, uh, we've seen how we have the instruction fetch stage, uh, the ID stage, uh, and the execute stage, and the MIMS stage, and the write back stage. Now obviously in a pipeline, uh, one of the most important thing is that we need between these stages to save the data. Data must be saved in uh, uh, data memory. We refer to those data memory as flip-flops. Now when you, when you, in, when you create an array of flip-flops, array of flip-flops, we call those typically registers, registers. Okay, so we, so we need the registers between these pipelines. So uh, we will see here that he is uh, that the, your textbook uh, uh, have shown those uh, registers in a gray shape. Okay, so you can see them. Uh, now this is this is the instruction fetch stage, uh, and this is the uh, decode uh, stage uh, and reading register, and this is the execute stage, and this is the uh, mim stage. And, um, and this is the write back stage. Notice the, the way uh, uh, the textbook names these stages as whenever you finish from an IFS stage and you move to the ID stage, then the registers between them is referred to as IF slash ID. We need to know this naming very, very well because uh, uh, in a few minutes, we will start talking about uh, referencing these stages. We will start talking about, about control signal. We will say IF uh, slash ID uh, a signal Y. What does that mean? Well, it means that from these registers, you have a signal named Y. Uh, y, y uh, uh, this is why uh, this is Y here. So let's uh, let's call it uh, Z. Uh, for example, uh, because I'm going to say YY, which is which is kind of confusing. Let's call it Z, for example. So uh, uh, why Z here? Why not from here? Why not from here Z? Why not? Well, because notice the naming. So so very very sh very shortly we'll start talking about the stage, the stage and dot signal. Okay, so uh, uh, the stage will will take you to either here or here or here or here okay and 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 you know what, what what we are referencing to okay so so notice that here you will see things that that the, the pc plus four uh, uh moves down the pipeline and, and 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 this is because every stage now is occupying different instruction and so you need to keep this data about the instructions as the instruction moves down the pipeline. So you need to save this data. Anything re regarding this instruction, control signals, data, addresses, you need to keep moving those things forward, okay, along with the instruction. And, and where to save them? In these registers between the pipeline stages okay so this is very important so those registers are very critical to the operation or the pipeline okay question why do we need them well if you don't have them then you have the, the data from from a new instruction moving on clubbing the data and and, and 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 corrupting all your data in the pipeline so this new this new data that comes in will say oh no 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 wait uh, you you new data wait you come in you finish the if you stop here you stop here we will save you here until we move you to the next stage and i can think of these uh, registers like the traffic lights they they kind of uh, organize the movement of traffic and 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 people who won't get into an intersection and collide um, with each other so, so these are these these registers they kind of organize the movement of data along the pipeline okay so there is this these are the registers uh, if slash id id slash Okay, IEX. I like to think of this, uh, uh, to be honest, my, my, my preference, this is stage to think of it, the stage where we have it in the IF. So the data will be saved here. The stage will say the ID, the data will be saved here. The, st the, 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 the stage where it is the, uh, the EX, we will save it uh, all the way here. And the state that we are in the MIM, we'll save it uh, all the way here. And the state which is in the right back will come and, and save it over here. So my personal preference is to name, uh, I, I don't like the naming convention or of textbook. Uh, if, if it would if it uh, uh, was left to me, I would have uh, named this as IF 
the IF uh, uh, registers, meaning the end of the stage of IF, this is what I save them. But anyway, this, this is the naming convention that we have in your textbook. Okay, so now uh, we, we have, uh, uh, we, should, we, can, we can take a look at instruction, like the, the load instruction, which means that we have to, to, to uh, 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 load data to the register file. And notice how he uh, is showing this step by step. He calls this, uh, a, a cycle by cycle and typically these used to explain the instructions we don't use them in the assignments or the exams but uh, kind of they, they illustrate the idea so in the first cycle of this instruction we fetch the instruction see the grain we 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 we, we, we uh, first of all we add pc uh, uh, plus uh, four that gives me pc plus uh, four which means move to the next instruction then we exit then we go to this max okay and then and then with this with this uh, uh, pc value i access the memory notice the shading to the right means i read from it so i read what i read the instruction which is the load instruction once i, I read the load instruction i save it i save it where in these registers which is if slash id which means save for me the data at the end of the if uh, uh, or uh, instruction fetch so the instruction now is saved right here with the, the, uh, the instruction and the PC plus four. Now, then the next step, we will move to the instruction decode, instruction decode. So I read the instruction, I decode the addresses, and now I read uh, uh, the, the, the base address, right? And uh, uh, obviously uh, I need the displacement here. So I, 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 I sign extent and send it to to this notice the shading here i read from the previous uh, uh, registers and then when i when i when i read the data and the, uh, the, I, I save it to the next set of registers the register that i read from are the if id the registers that i write to is the id ex now the next cycle what do i do this is the ex oops this is the ex cycle this is this is this is the ex uh, cycle that's not what I want to do. Okay, so uh, this is the EX uh, uh, cycle. All right. Notice I am I read my data from I uh, IDEX. All right, and I write to the EX uh, uh, mem. So uh, notice the shading again. It means that I am reading from these registers. All right. So I send my uh, uh, base register value. All right, uh, and the and the sign extended value to the ALU to compute the address for the memory. Okay, the address for the memory. And then and then this is ready to be sent to the MIM stage. So this is now the MIM stage. Okay, so this is the MIM stage. And notice now what do I do? I read the address uh, to the memory. Okay, the MIM stage from the EX slash MIM registers. And then I read the data from the memory. Notice the shading. When you read something, the shaded is on the right. So here is, you, you read here, the shading is in the right. Now I read the data, so I, I, I write it to the shading. Uh, uh, the shading becomes the left. That means I'm writing to this set of register, which is mem slash wp. Okay, so in the last stage here, which is the write back, write back, what do I do? I read uh, the data, which I read from the memory from the set of registers, and then send it back all the way here, okay? And the problem when I send it back all the way here is that is that I'm colliding with the with the with the right uh, 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 with the address of the right register with the new data coming in. It turned out what I need to do actually I have to send down the pipeline my destination register with me so that when I write the data the destination register is ready to in to tell me which register so that I don't collide with the destination register of this fresh instruction. So I have to move in the pipeline the destination register. I have to save it with me uh, across it. And this, this, this is why we are saying that executing an instruction is almost like you are carrying a file with the instruction, with all the information about this infra instruction, the sources for this instruction, the destination for this instruction, the flags, the controls. So it's a complete file that we carry down the pipeline with this instruction, and they are saved in these registers so that we are uh, accessing and using the correct control signals. Okay, okay. So the store instruction similar like load, but it differs that when we when we when we uh, uh, access the memory. Okay, 
uh, uh, we, we get uh, uh, the, the, the data here uh, uh, from, from the uh, second uh, source so that we have to um, uh, sort of uh, uh, save it in the, in the, in the memory. Okay, so so that because we are storing, and then you notice in the in the in the right back in the right back I'm sorry in the mem stage in the mem stage, all right we we write to the to, to to this memory. That's why the shading you will see into that because we are writing to the data memory because it is a store instruction. Okay, we are we are we are doing a store instruction. Very similar, but differs slightly from the load right at the end. Of course, there is no write back for the store instruction because, because we have not uh, uh, read any data. We have written uh, to the memory, okay? All right, so uh, no, uh, in the, so you see here, the write back says there is nothing. Okay, so now uh, the previously I showed you cycle by cycle by instruction, but what we would like to explain things really, it is more of the multi-cycle. And in multi-cycle we see, or we, do, uh, we show uh, uh, multiple instructions, and uh, you will see that this 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 is the y axis, okay. And in the x axis, we show the cycles what happens to them. So you can see here in the uh, for the first instruction, you can see instruction fetch, decode, da 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 da, da execute, um, uh, 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 mem uh, mem state, and write back state. <coughs> And you can see the next instruction starts uh, uh, one cycle uh, later. Da, 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 da. So it shows the inter interaction. Watch here in cycle five. Watch in cycle five. Okay, so in cycle five, what I have is that the, 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 the last instruction is, is going through the right back. The, the, I'm sorry, the first is instruction is going to the right back stage. The, the sub instruction, the subtract is going through the mem stage. The add instruction is going through the execute stage. And the load instruction, the second load instruction goes to the ID state, and the uh, add instruction, last instruction, fresh instruction goes to instruction fetch. So, so here the pipeline is busy. It is busy. Every stage is doing. That's what you really want from pipelines to stay busy. Because if you don't have them busy, then you're really wasting this hardware that you invested in. Okay. So, so you want them to to stay busy. Now, uh, how many number of cycles? Uh, uh, remember last lecture we say that number of cycles in a pipeline a number of cycles in a uh, you need to execute uh, in a pipeline equals what equal the fill time plus number of instruction okay so in this case uh, what's the fill time five minus one five stages minus one plus and how many instructions they have one two three four five five instructions so that gives me nine cycles that's exactly what i get i need nine cycles to execute this program okay now uh, of course, uh, if you are in the exam and you want to illustrate things to yourself, so you, you don't want to use the fancy schmancy uh, kind of uh, drawing like uh, the, the textbook do. You can just use those square, okay, square demonstration. So that will be easier for you. Okay. All right. Now, so uh, here you can you can see uh, the, the state of the pipeline when it is uh, busy. Uh, executing uh, various instructions. You can see this instruction, the fetches, this is instruction, the uh, decode, this instruction the, in, the, in, the, in the execute, this instruction in the, in the mem stage, and this instruction in the right back stage. So your pipeline is busy doing different instructions, and that's exactly what you want. Remember that restaurant example when we said you have multiple employees where, where uh, one employee is taking the order, another employee is, is, uh, is kind of cashing uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, getting the cash from the customer and uh, the payment, and, and the, the third employee is cooking the food, the fourth employee is, is, is handling uh, and packaging the food to the customer, and, 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 and that's why you want to keep these employees, these pipeline stages, and that's how you get the high throughput. Okay, simplified picture of the pipeline. Okay, and, and, and right now what we want to, to introduce is that this is this is when we call the file of if we have a file, a file that uh, or a profile that, that goes down the pipeline with the instruction. So you would, when, 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 when we fetch the instruction, uh, uh, this, this, is, this is the uh, instruction fetch stage, right? And this is the ID stage. In the ID stage, we generate lots of control signals. So what do we do with those controls? Well, these are this is the profile for the instruction. That the, these control signals are carried are carried with the in, with the instruction down the pipeline. Now we don't need 
to carry a control signal when, when we use it and we don't need it anymore. So you will see that uh, the control signals that are in the, for the execute will be in the execute stage. Okay, and done, finito, we don't, you, we don't send them to the pipeline. Now we send to the pipeline those who need it for MIM and write back. And in the MIM stage, and MIM, so we consume those control signals that needed for the MIM stage, done. We don't send it down to the pipeline. And then we, we send in the write back, uh, the control signals that uh, are used in the write. But this is the profile. Uh, this is the, 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 the data. This is the, uh, the, the file for, for the instruction that it, travels with the instruction. It tells the processor what need to be done for this instruction down the pipeline. So it's very critical. We understand that this control signals really are derived uh, from the instruction at the, at, the, at the decode stage and they travel with the instruction down the pipeline. Okay, so this is this is the pipeline here. Notice what we have added here. Uh, if, if, if I may, I may uh, see if I can get... Uh, uh, the highlighter. Notice, notice here. Notice here the control signals here that are created in the this ID stage. This is the ID stage. Okay, this is the ID stage. So we create all these control signals that now they start. They will travel with the with this with the instruction down the pipeline. And whenever we use section of the control signals and we don't need need them, we do not send them anymore. That's it. We stop send. Like for example, this is this is this is the EX stage. Right? We consume the EX control signal, that's it. We don't send it further than the pipeline. This is the MIM stage and the right back stage. We use the MIM sta uh, control signals here. We don't send it down to the pipeline. We send uh, just the right back for the right back stage. Okay, so this is the concept of uh, control signal uh, for, for the instructions. Okay, now uh, we will talk about how we will uh, handle data hazard. And data hazard, we will talk about two things. Hazard in the pipeline, hazard, we need to do detection and we need to do resolve. We need to resolve the, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, let me write this better. Uh, we need to resolve, resolve, the uh, uh, hazard. So we want to talk about detection, resolution, detection, resolution, how to detect and how to resolve. And we have said we need to detect by, by, by certain uh, sig signals and sequence and then the resolution we know we, so far we have been talking and discussing about the forwarding. So we know that the resolution would be forward, okay? Uh, uh, so, 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 but it's uh, now we, we want to talk about detection and how to implement forward. Okay. Well, for wording, okay, uh, we know that uh, we need, we need you, you know that we need boxes. That's it. You, you know, whenever we talk for wording, because because you have these these path coming from back and and has to merge some somehow with a path that traveling in the pipeline. So somehow you need a multiplexer. Somehow you need control for this multiplexer. Okay. So in these hazard, we're gonna talk detection resolution. Okay. Consider this example here. Oh, you could see the, the the hazards all over the place for this this example. This is a register two being written by this instruction, uh, and you can see and you can see the hazard. Uh, I'm reading this register. I'm reading this register. I'm reading this register. Oh, oh, it's, it's a hazard all over the place. Okay. So how to detect those hazards? Okay. All right. So let's uh, get the better pen here. Uh, all right. So now you can see in, 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 in this down pipeline, so we studied how, what to do with them. Uh, uh, in, this, in the case of this example, we have seen that since I need this, uh, uh, the data for, for register two for this instruction to be up an auto run. Okay, so what do I do? I forward. From where? From the output of the ALU to the input of the ALU. Okay, and then I need also I need register two as well for this instruction. What do I do? Well, we we, we, we see that this result traveled down pipeline, uh, the down the pipeline for the, the same instruction right here. It it travels from from the uh, from the output of the ALU to the output of the stage of the MIM. We forward it from the from the stage of the MIM to the input of the ALU so so that um, I get I get this instruction going on without any stalling. So I forwarded the, 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 this register in this case from the output of the ALU to the input of the ALU, and here from the output of the MIM stage, oops, 
from the output of the MIMS stage to the input of the ADU as well. Now, when we reach this instruction, the, 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 the data, which is, which is, which is uh, destination data of register 2, we have uh, 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 now uh, uh, reached the, uh, the, the, the stage of the write back. So we write it to the register file. And this instruction in particular, OK, it can read it from the register file. Because we know in the register file, we can uh, we can we can write in the first half of the cycle and read uh, from the second half of the cycle for the same register which is register register two which is which is uh, register two okay so this is register two in this case in this cycle in this cycle okay we are writing to register two in the first half and reading register in second half so i know for this instruction and what follows on uh, those need register two we don't need to do any forwarding in fact there is no hazard so the, the, the hazard is in this cycle and in this cycle because that's that's where i need forwarding so you can you can see uh, if i if i made it so 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 here are the hazard the hazard is in this cycle Okay, and in this cycle, because because this is where I need to forward the data from the output of the ALU into the input of the ALU, or the output of the MIM stage into the input of the ALU. But this stage is okay. This stage is okay. We don't we don't have hazard. So we need to detect here and activate, detect and activate or resolve uh, 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 the, the the hazards. Okay. So how do I detect? Well. Uh, 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 Let's go back here, and obviously it, it, it is very clear we need to uh, understand that, that um, the data, uh, if, if, if there is, oops, oops. Uh, we, if there is, if the, if the data that I am writing into it, which is, which is, which is coming from the EX stage right here, I'm writing to register two, and and then in this in, in this case this instruction one of this uh, one of the inputs for this instruction which is this one is happened to be a destination which is which is you can see the intersection here a destination for the previous instruction a source in the following instruction that's a hazard okay uh, and so so how do I detect this you can see I'm detecting this with this equation I am saying here if I am leaving the ex stage and I'm writing to a register my destination register and this happened to intersect to, with one of the sources for an instruction which is getting into the ex stage then I have a hazard or if I am leaving the MIM stage, if I'm leaving the MIM stage, like in this case, if I'm leaving the MIM stage, like in this, I'm leaving the MIM stage with the re register two, but there is an instruction that needs register two, then this is a hazard. So I am leaving the MIM stage, uh, and this is register two here. This is register two, okay, from the previous example. Uh, I'm leaving the MIM stage with a destination to register two, and then there is an instruction getting into the ex stage and one of the sources registered to then there is a hazard okay so this is the condition where i have a hazard basically the the, the, the sources uh, the source of the instruction the sources for the instruction getting into the ex stage uh, or the uh, 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 intersect with uh, uh, instructions leaving the ex stage uh, or uh, leaving the MIM stage uh, uh, leaving the ex stage into mem stage or leaving the mem stage into right then then i have to uh, a, a hazard here but this happens only if if i have the the the, the early instruction is writing to a register so so which means that this instruction right here uh, has to be writing to a register too Okay, it's not like uh, uh, we, we are doing a store or a branch. Uh, it has it has really to 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 be writing to this so that it will it it, it create that independency. So we want to make sure that we are writing to the register file uh, uh, and and what we want to do another restriction that the destination register is not zero. Why? Well, look at this case. If you are doing, uh, if you are doing, for instance, let's let's say we are doing add uh, zero register. Hmm? Uh, uh, let's say uh, S1, S2, and let's say, for example, I have, for example, I have add, uh, uh, let's say uh, 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 T0, uh, zero, zero, and uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, T2. 
So someone might say, oh, oh, there is, there is, there is a, 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 a there is a, uh, a hazard here. Uh, because you see you are writing to this register and you are learning from this register and the answer is there is no hazard and, and, and there is no hazard why because always register zero register zero will have a value of zero even if you write into it this is this this will not be executed by the hardware okay so so actually since always it has a value of zero so we know up front what's that what's inside this zero, uh, register zero it is zero so there is no so so there is no hazard so we need to exclude the case where destination register equals zero because if the destination register in this case is a zero then this example is not a hazard okay we need to exclude that okay so now let's talk about uh, our uh, so we talked about uh, detect the, uh, 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 the detecting the um, hazard. Let's talk about the uh, resolution. Well, the resolution happens through the forward paths. The resolution happens through the forward path. And and what are the forward path? See, I have one forward path that comes out. Oops, one forward path that comes out of. Uh, 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 this 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 is for, uh, first forward path that comes out of what? Comes out of the. Uh, ex after being saved, okay, and it goes to, to to back to the ALU. It goes back to the ALU, okay. Notice that the ALU has multiplexers here, and it it it, it, it chooses from this forward path because we can, because oh, okay, because because we can forward out of the output or we can forward out of the MIM stage, the MIM stage, which is which is which is right here, the output of the MIM stage. Let's see if I can get this with a different color. The output of the MIM stage, which is right here. This is the output of the MIM stage. Of course, after, after uh, uh, it comes out of the registers, this is, this is one, this is two. Okay, so, so I have two forwarding paths because in the previous example, we showed that uh, we can have, uh, we need the output from uh, 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 the output of the ALU or the MIM stage, the ALU or the MIM stage uh, after uh, being saved in the registers. Okay, all right. So now these I have two two paths. Along along you have uh, with these paths. Along you have with this data coming from the previous stage. So this multiplexer here, and and uh, and, and multiplexer. Oops. And and this multiplexer here, what they do, they organize, they organize uh, the, uh, the 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 data. Let me get rid of this uh, highlighter. This seems to be messing up with. The, so so this the org these multiplexers, they organize these multiplexers. They organize the data that gets into ALU. Now ALU has two inputs: input A and input B. And that's why I have this max, uh, the, 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 I call it max A and max B. So let's, uh, and let's, uh, let's use a color here, different color here. Uh, so this is, this is max A and uh, uh, multiplex. Uh, the screen is going crazy for some reason. Uh, and this is max B, okay? And, 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 and this is, you can see this, the control signal, this forward A, it can, this forward A controls the, what, what comes out of this multiplexer. This multiplexer either will give me a data from the previous stage or forward from the MIM or forward from the ALU. And similarly here, so, so why I, why, what's the difference between A and B? Well, because the, the ALU has two sources, A, A, A and B. So let's go back to our instructions. So see our instructions here? Our instructions here, uh, let's, go, uh, let's go to the example. Uh, see our instruction here? It has two sources, this source and this source. So we need to, to forward this destination to uh, the appropriate source to the ALU, which is source A. I don't want to send it back to source B because I will, I will uh, destroy the value for register 5. So I have to forward to the appropriate source, A and B. The ALU has two inputs, input A and input B. So I have to forward two to the correct source for the ALU. Okay. Now, you can see that uh, uh, for the ALU, Okay, for 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 uh, the, these these when forward A equals uh, two or forward B equals two, what we do we activate the forward uh, the forward data from the output of the ALU 
into the uh, uh, source uh, 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 A uh, or the L output of the LU into source B. Okay. Now, now notice notice how how we detect that. Well, we detect this condition by by making sure that the destination register equal RS. That's how I know that I need to send it to, to A. Or the destination register equals RT. Okay, that's how I, I know I need to send the output of the ALU to, to, the, to, 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 to the B source. Now I can, so this, this sends from the ALU. Now I can, I have another forward path from the MIM stage, okay, the output of the MIM stage into A, or the MIM stage into B. Okay, how do I know which is which? Well, uh, first of all, I know this is the condition by, by uh, checking the destination register, Okay, from the MIM state, the output of the MIM stage, with the sources uh, uh, of the instruction <coughs> that are getting in the EXS stage. If RS equals this RD, then I need to send it to the port A. If RT equals the RD, then I, I need to send it to port B. Okay, so otherwise, if there is no hazard detection, the, the input of the ADU uh, they, they act normal. I don't need to activate any forwarding path. So this is here. This is the resolution. This is how I resolve, right? Uh, the, 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 by activating the appropriate paths uh, for 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 the data uh, to, to forward it from the ALU to one of the ports. Uh, if if there is a hazard between. The output of the ALU and the input uh, to, uh, of the instructions that are getting in the uh, execution unit, or to activate the forward path from the MIM stage to the input of the ALU if there is a, a, a hazard between one of the input of the ALUs and the, the uh, one of the input uh, between the MIM output and one of the input to the ALU. Now there is a, a case here which is interesting. Notice this this instruction here. You have here a, a dependency dependency here. Uh, and notice, according to our previous equation, we will activate two paths because we will detect there is a hazard. Okay, there is a hazard. So uh, uh, in this case, this instruction, which is the last instruction here, okay, uh, 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 we know, oops, uh, sorry, let me erase this. Okay, notice I have a destination of one here and a destination of one. And then I have a source for register one. So the question is, when I am executing this instruction, uh, and I instruction, and I see the source uh, of register one, and I see the destination of register one here and destination register one here, th th this will will trigger the question: which one I should forward to this input? Should I forward this one here, or should I forward this one here? Well, logic says that you will take the last data. This is the one that you should forward it over here. But our equations that, that we just discussed say that we will activate the two forwarding path, which is wrong. It means that whenever I have a forwarding path from the uh, uh, a closer instruction, it be active or cancel the forwarding path from a further instruction. So this instruction, when it leaves the EX, I need its data. While this instruction, which is farther, it will leave the memory. I said, no, 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 no. I don't need your memory feed uh, uh, forward path. I don't need, because I am getting a fresher data from the execution unit, which is, which is this one here. So to do this, what we'll do, we will say that we only activate, we only activate the MIM hazard path, we only activate it if there is no a close instruction in the EX stage which has a hazard with the current instruction. If it is not, then activate MIM stage, right? So uh, to repeat, we activate the MIM hazard only if there is no hazard between the data getting into the ALU and the data leaving the ALU. Because if it is the case, then cancel the MIM hazard. The data which is leaving the ALU should uh, should take precedence and, and, and be forwarded to the, to the ALU. So this is basically saying if I have MIM hazard and ALU hazard for the same instruction, which has higher priority, the ALU hazard has the higher priority and we cancel the, the, MIM, the MIM hazard. So, so in any ca case, we still have a hazard. We still have a hazard, but we are just prioritizing the, 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 the hazard by giving the ALU hazard 
a higher priority okay all right so this is now my data path right and you can see you can see these are the control signals right you can see these are the signals that we check for the hazard and this is the forwarding unit okay which controls for me the multiplexers that 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 selects uh, the data coming from previous stage or from the feedback paths okay so that's basically uh, no we finally we will uh, the, the load hazard and the load hazard basically if I have if I'm loading uh, if I'm loading a data into register 2 and then I'm adding uh, I'm using register 2 in the next ALU instruction we said in this case we need to, to, to insert a bubble uh, so this hazard even with the forwarding we need to cancel this instruction or delay this instruction and and, and insert a bubble into, into the pipeline and and for that what we do we we use this checking mechanism you check the instruction uh, if it is a read and you check the the the, the uh, uh, sources of the instruction uh, that are getting uh, uh, into the ID if one of the sources intersect with an instruction uh, uh, a destination instruction in the case of a load then you have a dependency on an instruction that that is that is waiting for a load to to be completed so in this case we insert a, a bubble we start and we, we we stall the pipeline and insert a bubble and we say that basically uh, we for uh, th this happened by forcing uh, 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 zeros in the IDEX register uh, uh, and to prevent update for the PC and ID register um, uh, uh, we, we use the uh, instruction is decoded again the following instruction is fetched again now this is this is something I'm not sure if it is accurate I wouldn't I wouldn't re refetch the instruction because typically it's in a prefetch buffer but anyway we'll, we'll, we'll follow your textbook here and uh, basically we, we stall by one cycle meaning we wait extra cycle and you can see that here this is the stalling here okay because because we we want to have this loading and then we forward it to the input of the ADO because we need the data which is loaded to register 2 which is a source in the AND instruction okay so this is this is now now you uh, our hazard uh, detection unit uh, uh, complete and now our pipeline is complete so we can see that here uh, we have hazard detection unit basically we detect and uh, this is this is our forward forwarding unit which is the hazard resolution uh, uh, for, uh, we use a forwarding path from the MIM stage and the the, the uh, EX stage the, out, the output of the EX and the MIM stage and uh, with that we have completed the discussion of how I can uh, detect and resolve uh, uh, data path hazards in the MIPS pipeline. And thank you very much.